Good to have you young men with us this morning. And all of you that's come to worship with us this, this morning, let's just give God glory and honor and praise in the house of God. Stand with me this morning as we dismiss our Sunday school hour and go into morning worship. Let's just worship God today. Let's just praise Him and magnify Him and glorify Him. And uh, just had a time last Sunday. Enjoyed Sunday morning service. Enjoyed, I enjoyed preaching Sunday nights, message so much. I preached it again Wednesday night. Just before start, uh, service was to start at Southern Hills, Brother Jones asked me if I'd like to preach. And I didn't get a chance to answer, and Brother Tim said, sure he will. <laughs> so I preached Wednesday night there at Southern Hills, preached the same message I uh, preached on um, Sunday night. And I had to tame it down a little bit because it was Wednesday night. Uh, I was supposed to be teaching, and I told Brother Jones out there, I got started, I forgot to tell you, I don't know how to teach. All I know to do is preach. So we had a wonderful service there. I feel like some folks were helping that message. What a wonderful uh, message the Lord laid upon our heart. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Your soul still burning this evening, this morning, from the last Sunday evening, still burning with that fire and that desire of the Lord. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we enter into our worship service. Let's enter into His courts with thanksgiving and praise. And after we pray, just begin to fill this choir up. And we've come this morning expecting nothing less than what we got last week because we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what God has for us. Let's have church this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for another opportunity that we have to be in the house of God. Thank you, dear God, that you hear us when we pray. Dear God, that you've heard every request that we brought before you, dear God. And we just thank you today, praise you today, glorify you today, and magnify you for what's going to be accomplished here in this place this morning. Lord God, we just give you honor and praise and glory and majesty for all your many blessings that you're going to bestow upon us. And on everything that we say and everything that we do, we'll give you the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join in the choir this morning. Let's sing for the glory of God.
Pastor Kenny Clark this morning. Glory to God. No gospel shit. Oh.
Jesus. Where would we be without Jesus? Thank you, God, for your begotten Son that died on that cross. My goodness gracious. I'd hate to know. I'd hate to know that I didn't have a future without my Lord. Because there's no way but down. I can down. People say, oh, I just man made no laws. Huh? Man wrote that book. Well, God inspired that man to write that book. Now, I'm in the chapter of uh, the book of Hebrews, it's mostly about faith. You know, without faith, we have nothing. But with faith, we have it all. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that faith. Thank you, Lord. Page 180.
as a Sunday school lesson this morning, everything we intended for, serving God and drawing closer to Him intentionally, making that decision. I want to be more like Him, more in His presence, yes. more what He wants me to be. Yes. Mature in the Lord, perfect in Him, striving for that. Yes. If we strive for that and push for that, that's going to come to pass one day. We, we can't, this mind can't begin to fathom that. See, we're, we're longing for it. We're looking for it. We're like Paul said, we've got our eyes on the prize. We've got a made up mind. We testify. We say things like Brother Jamie said last week. I don't care if it's by way of the rapture or the grave. I'm ready for it. But we can't begin to comprehend in our mind what it's going to be like when we get over there. These songwriters, they, they try to do it, man, it excites us because it's, it's as, as big as we can get it. We put words like amazing and fabulous and fantastic and to try to describe it. We can't begin to comprehend and understand what it's going to be like when it unfolds before our eyes. When we step from this mortal, this carnal, uh, we step from all the sorrows and struggles and hardships, uh, and we step across that threshold of glory. When we step in there, no more sin, no more pain, no more struggle, uh, no more comfort. I'm telling you, that's happiness, church. Uh, there's going to be a joy that overflows our soul. It tells us there'll be no need for life, for Jesus Himself will be the. We can't comprehend that. We can't wrap our mind around that. But we won't have to. When we do, this is going to be the glory of God that fills our soul. There's going to be running. There's going to be shouting. There's going to be singing. It's going to be a Pentecostal service when we get to heaven, I guarantee you. What a wonderful time it's going to be. That's just going to be in my mansion. Amen. And in yours, and we all meet there in the presence at the feet of Jesus to lay our crowns down at His feet. Oh, man, what a time that's going to be. What a grand reunion day. I don't know everything that's going to be on the agenda when we get there, but he tells us there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. There's going to be all of these wonderful things. There's going to be a river that we can walk by. There's going to be a tree there that we can rest under. Just so many blessings. If they're taking a load right now, I'm ready to go. Amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to what he has prepared for us. We can't begin to fathom that, but we've got to keep pressing for it. It's going to be reality. Sooner than we think, it's going to be a reality. And I'm looking forward to that reality to come to pass. Looking forward to meeting each and every one of you on the other side of glory. What a wonderful time that's going to be. See, I've got some people that, that has gone on before that I'm looking forward to seeing again. I mean, Brother Bob was talking about a little bit before Sunday school this morning. When we know people there like we know them here. Yes, we'll be known as we're known. And what a time it's going to be. See, I've got a baby sister. When she was down here, she could never walk. When we get over there, we're going to be walking by the river together. What a wonderful time. I've got a mom that the whole time she was down here, she was depressed and she was down and out. But thank God, when I get over there, she's not going to be depressed. She's going to be full of joy, full of the presence of God. What a wonderful time. What a grand reunion day. But most of all, most of all, we're going to see the face of our Jesus. The songwriter said, it's great to see you, Paul. It's great to see you, Timothy. It's great to see you. And I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. He's the one that died for me. Oh, what a great day that's going to be. Everybody's going to be happy over there. But i got a question for you. Are you happy here this morning? Amen. I don't know how you can be in those services last Sunday and not still be happy. Brother Joseph, my cup's still overflowing. Amen. My cup's still overflowing. What a wonderful God we serve. He's so gracious to us. He's so wonderful to us. And I'm so thankful for him. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to have our visitors with us. Good to see each of you in the house of the Lord today. 1 Kings this morning, chapter number 19. Chapter number 19 preaches like chapter number 18 did. We're in for church this morning. 1 Kings chapter 19. We find Elijah in chapter 19 in a very different place than what we found him in chapter 18. We found him in chapter 18 as a victorious warrior. We find him in chapter 18 as a man who said it would rain and rain, called rain down from heaven, told, the, told them to prepare themselves. We found him in chapter 18 that he was a man who called fire, began to pray, and fire fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifice. We found him as a man in chapter 18 that he took and he had all those that were opposed to God slew. We find him in chapter 18 leaving the people as he as the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the sacrifice. We find the people proclaiming that the Lord 
He is the God, the Lord. He is the God. Well, chapter 19 is very different in the life of Elijah. And we find this in our lives as well. And that's what I want us to look at this morning. Let's begin reading in verse number 11. We're going to look at this chapter this morning, but for sake of time and text, we're going to look beginning in verse number 11. Here is Elijah now. He is in this cave, gone out into the wilderness, and the Lord has come forth and spoke to him. And he says, Go forth and stand upon the mountain, mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. For the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. For the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. For the Lord was not in the fire. Listen to this. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And after the fire, a still, small voice. What did we speak about last Sunday night? The fire of the Lord. The fire of the Lord. He said, after the fire, a still, small voice. Verse 13, And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood in the inner end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? What doest thou here, Elijah? Verse 13, first part of the verse, it said it was so when Elijah heard the still small voice of God, when he heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle. Yeah. That he wrapped his face in his mantle. I want to preach this morning a message entitled, Wrapped Up in the Anointing. Yeah. Wrapped Up in the Anointing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. You stretch your hand in this direction today. Heavenly Father, so grateful this morning. For this opportunity we have to be in your house, Lord. This opportunity that we have, dear God, to come and to experience you in all of your majesty, in all of your splendor, dear God. So thankful for the way that you moved in this place, dear God. Sunday, dear God. So thankful, dear God, for the ministry, dear God, that took place here on Wednesday. Oh, Lamb of God, but those days are behind. The Sunday is gone. Last Sunday is gone. The Wednesday is past, but now we're here, dear God needing a fresh touch of the Master's hand in this place today. No doubt for some, the week has been long. No doubt, dear God, the struggle has been great. But today we come needing a fresh touch from the Master's hand. And I pray, Heavenly Father, there be fresh bread found in the house of the Lord this morning. I pray, Lamb of God, that there would be refreshing, dear God, that would take place in hearts and lives all today in this place. I pray, God, for an anointing, dear God, that's greater than we. Oh, Lamb of God, to begin to saturate every heart, every life, dear God. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to anoint us with a mighty anointing that we may receive what you have for us in this place. We'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As I said, we find Elijah in a very different place. In a very different place than we found him in chapter 18. Let's look at where we found him in and in chapter 18, Elijah came unto the people and said, How long? Verse 21. How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. And the people answered Him not a word. So we find Elijah here standing up proclaiming uh, that, that he is serving the one and only God. And he said, You need to make up your mind which one is God and follow Him. So then we find Elijah calls for all of Baal's prophets and tells, uh, tells Ahab to, uh, to call for all of the, the prophets of Baal and they get there on the mountain. And we read the story last week and we preached it last Sunday night and, and they had all of them there and they began to call upon Baal and Baal did not answer. But God answered. God answered and He not only answered, uh, but He answered with fire. And we uh, shared last Sunday night that God always answers with fire uh, when He's pleased with the sacrifice. Uh, our God is a consuming fire. The same God that answered with fire uh, and then came and consumed that sacrifice uh, that Elijah offered there in that day is the same God uh, that answers with fire when we, uh, like Romans 12, 1 and 2 tells us to do, presents ourselves before Him uh, acceptable unto the Lord. It's our reasonable service. Uh, and we're not conformed to this world. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, we're acceptable sacrifice unto God uh, that He still consumes us uh, with fire. Just he did Elijah. That's where Elijah was. The fire of the Lord fell. And it said in verse 39, and when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, 
He is God. And in verse 40, we stopped at verse 39 last week, but verse 40 says, Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, and let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Tishon, and slew them there. Now Elijah stood very bold before Ahab. Elijah stood very bold before the prophets of Baal, uh, and he proclaimed what the Lord had told him to proclaim. Uh, he prayed that prayer, hear me, O God, hear me. Uh, and when he did that, the fire fell. Uh, the sacrifice was consumed. Uh, the hearts of the people were turned to know uh, that the God of Elijah was the God. Uh, and they began to proclaim that. Uh, and he tells us here that in his boldness and in all of his integrity uh, that they took those prophets of Baal, and they slew them. Uh, Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, uh, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Uh, so the same man that just uh, prayed fire from heaven, uh, he got, after all of this drought, uh, he began to pray again, uh, and he began to tell Ahab, Get ready, I've already prayed, uh, and the Lord's going to send it. There's a sound of an abundance of rain, and the rains came, and they flooded that place. And here's Elijah victorious. Here's Elijah with the power of God in him. Uh, how many of you left here last Sunday uh, feeling like Elijah must have felt when he left that mountaintop? Uh, their heart full, their mind full, their spirit full. Uh, here was Elijah. He was filled up, man. Uh, he was full of the power of God. Uh, he had done seen the fire of God fall. God's had answered his prayer. Uh, oh, there's an excitement when God answers our prayer. Uh, there's an excitement when the fire of the Lord falls. Uh, there's an excitement when that refreshing of the Spirit comes. Uh, when we leave the house of God, uh, it feels like uh, as the prophet uh, the psalmist said I can run uh, through a troop I can jump over a wall uh, I feel the power of God burning within my heart uh, man Elijah came down on that mountain top uh, and he had that old Pentecostal preachers woo uh, as he came down on that mountain uh, he was excited uh, about what God had done that the hearts of the people uh, were turned to God they said the Lord uh, he's, uh, there's nothing like knowing uh, that we've trained somebody's heart uh, with our testimony. Uh, there's nothing like knowing that we preached the gospel uh, and saw somebody fall down in an altar. Uh, somebody that came and said, I don't even know that there is a God. Uh, I don't know what to do with life. I don't know where to turn. Uh, I don't know who to serve anymore. Uh, and when we hear them testify, uh, I know because the gospel message was shared with me uh, and the fire of the Lord fell and I saw it uh, and He is God. Uh, he is God. Uh, he is God. Well, Elijah, he was excited. See, he faced Ahab, and he defeated Ahab. He faced the prophets of Baal, and he defeated the prophets of Baal. But he wasn't ready for what he was fixing to come up against. Come on. He wasn't ready for what he was fixing to face. In chapter 19, in verse number 1, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the soul. Now Ahab went home and told Jezebel. We know about Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab wanted the field. Man wouldn't give it to it. Jezebel said, you're going to give him that field. When Jezebel spoke, uh, they listened. When Jezebel spoke, uh, this is a woman who had uh, great authority in her voice. What Jezebel is, uh, is she is a reflection and an image of Satan uh, in the Old Testament. What she is, uh, we, we've heard throughout the years that Jezebel's spirit uh, being in the church. And here's that Jezebel uh, speaking uh, to Elijah. She comes to Elijah in verse 2. Je Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the God God's due to me, and more also, if they make not thy life the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Well, he was this prophet of God, this man of God that fire came from heaven when he prayed. This prophet of God that he said was going to rain, and it rained. When first he said it wasn't going to rain, and it didn't rain. He said it was going to rain, and it rained. He stood upon the authority and the power of God. He took and he proclaimed that the Lord was God, and the people proclaimed that the Lord was God. So he slew all the prophets of Baal, and he was very victorious. But here's Jezebel said, if it's not, she said, look and watch and see. If by this time tomorrow, let the gods do to me and more also. She said, if I I don't make my life as the life of one of them by tomorrow. What was she telling Elijah? She said, I'm going to kill you uh, just as you killed
kill them. If your God thinks he can stop me, let him stop me. This is the boat that Jezebel came. And when he saw that, he saw that message, he rose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Now this is the same man. This is the same prophet that you saw fire fall from heaven. This is the same prophet that seen the power of God move. The same prophet that seen the power of God manifested there on that mountaintop. Now he got a message from uh, that devil that said, uh, if your God is God, watch and see. Uh, watch and see what I do to you. Uh, the same thing that you did to those prophets is going to be done to you by this time tomorrow. Uh, and Elijah already thought that he was the only one. Uh, so Elijah began to run. Uh, but he answered. But he hid himself with uh, a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree uh, and requested for himself that he might die. And said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And then he lay and slept under a juniper tree. We find Elijah here. He had got the report. He had got the message uh, from Jezebel uh, that he, his life was going to be taken. Uh, so this man of God, full of integrity, full of the power of God, full of the anointing of God, uh, had seen the manifestation of God's Spirit. Uh, when he got this report from the devil, what did he do? Uh, he ran. Uh, he not only ran, but he ran and hid in the wilderness. Uh, and he said, Lord, take my life. It's better than I die. Uh, it's done. It is finished. Uh, it's complete. The only thing worse than the Jezebel spirit in our church today, uh, the only thing worse than the Jezebel spirit uh, is a man that will allow that Jezebel spirit to control him. Uh, the only thing that's worse than the Jezebel spirit uh, is that when a man of God uh, will bow down to that and run scared uh, from what that devil has to say to him, uh, when that devil begins to threaten his life, uh, when that devil begins to threaten to say uh, that your life has come, uh, I have a dear friend of mine, Brother Henry Thornton, a uh, wonderful man of God, wonderful uh, preacher of the gospel. Uh, he said, I stepped up on my step one night coming home from preaching. Saw the power of God move. Uh, and he said, I put my foot up on that step and when I did it, the devil spoke to me and said, uh, I'm going to kill you. Uh, it wasn't long after that that he had a heart attack. They had to put a pacemaker in. Uh, but Brother Henry Thornton's not dead today. Uh, he's still preaching the gospel. Uh, Satan may try to kill. Uh, Satan might try to send those messages. Uh, but remember, child of God, that nothing come to you uh, unless it first came through God. Uh, and the devil can roar. He has us a roaring line uh, seeking who he made about. He's got a lot of messages. Uh, he's going to whisper in our ear. Uh, he's going to bring discouragement. He's going to threaten our life. Uh, he's going to tell you better stop preaching that. Uh, he's going to tell you if you keep preaching that, uh, you're going to be dead. If you keep preaching that, uh, they're going to starve you out. Uh, if you keep preaching that, you're going to suffer. Uh, I've heard of pastors uh, say that people told him, I know when you go to the office. Uh, I know when you're alone. Uh, and his wife's so scared that she was looking under the car uh, to make sure there was not a bomb strapped to it. Uh, it's how scared this family got uh, because they proclaimed the word of God. Uh, the devil may roar, the devil may rage, uh, but here's this man of God that had seen the fire of God fall. Uh, he's here under a juniper tree saying, let me die. Let me die. The fire could fall this week and then by next week we could find ourselves in that same place. Some of us can familiarize with Elijah. Oh, we saw the power of God move in this place last Sunday. And then during this week, there's things that come against us. And we begin to even think, man, I'd be better off then. The devil's trying to kill me anyway. The devil's trying to stop me anyway. Uh, the devil's trying to prevent me anyway. Uh, the devil's trying to hinder what I'm going to do anyway. I'm not going to be able to do anything for God. Uh, he said that by this time tomorrow, I'm going to be dead anyway. Uh, and Elijah began to say, Lord, why don't you go ahead and take me? Uh, it'd be better off than I was dead. It'd be better off than I was dead. He fell asleep, and behold, the angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals, and a cruise of water in his, in his head. And they didn't eat and drink, and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drank, and went into the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights. So that tells me he wasn't dead the next day. Forty days and forty nights under Horath, the Mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. Now here is Elijah. He ran into the wilderness. And God sent an angel. God sent an angel with provision for him. God sent an angel with a cake for him to eat and water for him to drink. And it said it sustained him for forty days. 
Now we come from that mountaintop experience where the fire of the Lord falls, souls are being saved, uh, lives are being touched, uh, that victory in our life, that victory in our ministry, uh, and we find ourselves maybe as Elijah in this wilderness. Uh, here's God. He sent an angel to Elijah. He prepared for him. He gave him uh, 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 food to eat, water to drink, uh, and he went in the strength of that for 40 days. Uh, he, he went by that strength that the angel provided for him. Uh, there's times in this spiritual walk uh, that we'll be in the wilderness. Uh, and there'll be times in this spiritual walk, maybe even after mountaintop, uh, that we're running scared just as Elijah was. Uh, maybe you're there this morning. You're in that wilderness uh, running uh, because you're scared. Running because you're fretting. Uh, running because you think you're the only one. Uh, running because you don't even know if it's worth it anymore. Uh, running because uh, it don't matter what you saw yesterday. That's in the past. That's gone. Uh, you say, I need something today. Uh, and Lord, it looks like I'm the only one. Uh, it looks like I'm all that's left. I don't even know if it's worth it anymore. Uh, if God will send fresh bread for you. Uh, if God will send water and refreshing for you. Uh, just as Brother Buster shared in this marathon that we're running. Uh, there'll be times of refreshing. God sent that angel down. Uh, and God may be sending that angel to you this morning. Uh, if you're in that wilderness place. Uh, saying, here I'm prepared for you. Uh, here I'm prepared for you. Something that will keep you going. Just a little bit longer. Yeah. Just a little bit longer. That's just what it did. It kept Elijah going a little bit longer. But he went deeper into the wilderness. Times that God provides for us, that He gives us fresh word, that God gives us a refreshing of the Spirit, that He'll send angels by. Let the Scripture tell us, be careful lest we entertain angels unaware. Let it tell us that. Uh, there's times that the, the man of God or the woman of God will minister to your heart. Uh, as Brother Buster shared, you might uh, receive a text from uh, Sister May or somebody in the church just let you know, uh, I'm praying for you. That begins to feed you. That's like a cool drink of water to let you know uh, that God has blessed me, uh, that God has touched Speaker, but this wasn't enough. This wasn't enough for Elijah. But he went deeper. He went into a cave. He went into a cave. Now back then, they didn't have flashlights. They didn't have foaming lanterns as you and I had. If Elijah had anything, he just had a, a little flame there that was lit on his hand, if he even had that. But that cave was dark. And that cave was a, a dark place. And Brother Wayne shared with us just a couple weeks ago how big those caves could be. David and all of his men. And Saul and all of his men were in a cave. And Saul didn't even know David and all of his men was there. And David came up and he cut the end of his garment there and had it in his hand. And Saul didn't even know that he was there. He could have slew him there. So we know how big these caves could have got. So here is Elijah. He's been sent the angel of the Lord. He's been sent the refreshing of the Lord. In, in his wilderness, in his wilderness place. Uh, have you ever been there? You've been in the wilderness and you feel the refreshing of the Lord. You've ate it. You've drunk it. You said amen to it. You said that was just what I needed. Uh, you may have patted the preacher on the back on the way out the door and said I needed that today, Pastor. I, I've been going through some things. There's been some doubts in my mind. Uh, oh, and I needed that fresh word that you delivered today. Uh, I needed that spirit of God that moved in the house of God today. Uh, I really needed that. That angel came by uh, and ministered to you. That man or woman of God came by and ministered to you. Uh, and, and you left there and you went on that for a while. Elijah went on that for a little while, but he stayed in the wilderness. There's many today that are getting and receiving from God's servants. Even angels are ministering to them and they're staying in the wilderness. They're staying in the wilderness. It's not enough. It just didn't seem to be enough, enough to, for them to last 40 days. So here's Elijah in verse 9. He came hither to a cave and lodged there. Now, the angel had ministered to him in the wilderness and after that 40 days, and after that ran out, he went into a deeper place, into a cave representing darkness. Yeah. He went into that cave where he, he sure thought that he would be hidden here, he would uh, be safe here. He felt like he was running because he was the only one, the same ones that had proclaimed that the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. Uh, they, were, uh, they were calling for his life now. They were uh, on uh, Jezebel's side and calling for his life and, uh, and, and trying to, to take him, uh, if you will, and trying to destroy them, uh, if you will. But here is Elijah in this cave. Now the angel had already came. It says here, Behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elisha? Now the angel had already ministered to him. The angel had already woke him up, gave him bread to eat, 
wanted to drink, substantive. Now he's in a cave. So this time, what an angel that came to him. What an angel that was dispatched to talk to him. The Lord said, I've got to go and talk to this guy myself. I've got to go and talk to him myself. And the Lord came and as he looked around, could you imagine this? Here's Elijah in this cave and the voice of the Lord speaking here in this cave. He said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Have you ever been there, been in that funk? Been in that cave? Been in that wilderness? Been in that place where, where you felt defeated? Been in that place where you <laughs> felt downtrodden? Been in that place where you didn't know what you were going to do? Uh, didn't know what your ministry was adding up to? Didn't even know what your life was adding up to? Uh, didn't even know if it was worth serving God anymore anyway? Uh, and then the Spirit of the Lord speak to you uh, like you did a lot. said, what are you doing here? You just called fire from heaven. You just called, you just said it was going to rain, it was going to rain. You just did great things in ministry. You just, uh, it was right in the middle of what I called you to be, just standing right in the middle of it. Let me share with you this morning, there's nothing like standing right in the middle of God's anointing. Uh, there's nothing like standing right in the middle of what God called you into. Uh, nothing like standing right in the middle of God's plan. But I have found it to me, uh, uh, after all these years of ministry, I've seen it uh, in my life and I've seen it in others' lives. Uh, in that time where it seems like people are basking uh, in the middle of what God has called them to do, uh, and the power of God moving, and the power of God flowing, uh, they're right there in the middle of it. Uh, it's not long after that they're in a wilderness experience, uh, and the devil's trying to take right. them out. Why is that? Uh, because when God ordains men and women uh, to do great things, uh, the devil's going to do everything and anything uh, that he can do to stop it. Uh, he'll use Jezebel to try to stop you. Uh, he'll use angels have to try to stop you. Uh, he'll use whatever he's got to do uh, to get you in the wilderness uh, because he knows if he can get you in the wilderness uh, you'll starve yourself to death uh, and you'll begin to doubt God. Uh, oh, but thank God that in our wilderness uh, God sent an angel. Uh, and thank God that we're wicked in our cave. Uh, and God said, I'm going to go to it. Uh, and just as he spoke to Elijah, somebody this morning, uh, you're in that cave. Uh, somebody this morning, you're in that dark place, in that dark hour in your life, uh, and you've got a lot of doubts and a lot of questions uh, about who God is uh, and what this thing is, uh, and all that I've been told all these years, you've been doubting it. Uh, you're sitting in a dark cave this morning, uh, but just as God spoke here uh, in this verse, in verse 9, uh, God's speaking to you and saying, What doest thou here? Yeah, come on. God's saying to you this morning, What are you doing in this place? Why are you here? I called you to be on the mountain. Why are you here? I called you to win souls. Why are you here? I called you to be a prophet. What are you doing here? So Elijah began to tell him, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Elijah said, I've got a good reason. The people don't want to hear it anymore, Lord. The people don't want to serve it. They've chosen other gods. They've torn down your altars. They've even slain the prophets of God. He said, I'm the only one left. See, Elijah delivered this to the Lord. Seemed like a fair enough excuse to him to be in a wilderness, to be in a cave, to be hiding out in the cave somewhere. He said, I'm the only one. I might as well be here by myself. And I would hope that Elijah, uh, one of... Uh, one commentator said that possibly Elijah went there to this place because this is where Moses met with God. This mountain that the Lord's sitting to is where Moses possibly met with God. And here's Elijah hoping he would have that same encounter with the Lord. He was hoping that he would have, how many times that we do this, we're there and, and we're in that place, we're in that dark place, we're in that cave, uh, and, and the Lord comes to us and the Lord begins to speak to our heart, and, and we want the Lord to join our pity party. Come on. Yes. Come on. We want the Lord to feel sorry for us. Yeah. Woe well, was me how bad I got it. Lord, they were going to kill me, so I had to run. Mm -hmm. They were going, he said, Jesus said, this, this is red letter gospel. He said, don't fear him that can destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy the body and soul. Mm -hmm. Elijah, you didn't have to fear them. Did Jesus preach Elijah a sermon? No. Did the Lord speak him a sermon there that day? No, we find in verse 11, he said this. He said, go forth, stand upon the mountain before the Lord. 
For the whole of the Lord passed by, a great and strong wind rent the mountains, breaking pieces the rocks before the Lord. The Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, the Lord was not in the fire. Now for us, man, we're Pentecostal. We're Pentecostal. That wind start blowing, mountains breaking up, earthquake, this church begin to shake. Oh, that must be God. That must be what God is saying to me. Oh, and then, and then the fire fell. Oh, that had to be God. The fire fell. That, that must be what God is saying to me. Although this was not the message that God was delivering Elijah was not through the fire, through the earthquake, through the wind. All of those things were to get the attention of this man, that he could uh, focus all of his attention. Uh, think back to Moses as he's standing there in that wilderness, uh, and this bush begins to burn. What does it say? Uh, that Moses begins to draw closer to that bush, uh, because he's wanting to figure out this phenomenon. Uh, he's wanting to figure out why is this bush burning, and it's not consumed. Moses knew you go over there and light a bush up, in a few minutes, it's going to burn up. It'll just be a pile of ashes. This bush, it wasn't happening. It just kept burning and burning and burning. So here's Moses. That bush has been burning for a while now, and it's not consumed. And he got close to it, and he got his attention on it, and he began to look at it. And then all of a sudden, something bigger than that bush, not being consumed, happened. A voice came out of that bush. Yeah. Whoa. It was the voice of the Lord. That was no different here on this mountain. That wind began to blow. That earth began to quake. That fire fell. Uh, and all of that got Elijah's attention. And he is looking. Uh, and it says here, and that's the very next part of this verse, and after the fire, but after the fire, still, small voice. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. A still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his hand. We see where Elijah was at. Man was victorious. He had victory. Anybody here had those victories? There's some of you, you were shouting around here last Sunday, but this Mom. week, you've been like Elijah. You've been in that wilderness. You've been, you've been in that cave. God has sent blessings upon you and sent strength upon you. You've made it back here this morning, but you're still saying, Brother Jamie, I'm in a cave. I don't know. I've seen people, man, they've been blessed one week, come back the next week, and, uh, and say, I don't even know if it's even worth doing anymore. Uh, I've seen preachers, uh, they have preached under the power of God, seen the power of God move, uh, and it wasn't just a few days later, they're talking about giving up the ministry. Uh, I'm thinking, what in the world uh, is wrong with this man? What's wrong uh, with these people? Because instead of uh, staying where God said to stay, uh, instead of being where God said to be, they ran. Right. They ran. So it was when Elijah heard the voice that he wrapped his face in his mantle. I know this isn't a mantle. This, this is an old towel that Sister Amy will let me use. <laughs> <laughs> but he has that mantle. You know what's amazing to me about this story? That even though Elijah went through the wilderness, even though Elijah was in the cave, even though Elijah was running scared and running for his life, he still had a man. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what the mantle represents in the Word of God? Can anybody tell me what the mantle represents in the Word of God? The anointing. Should have got that from the title of my message, wrapped up in the anointing. The anointing. That mantle represented the anointing. Whether that mantle represented the anointing before this verse or not, I don't know. But we find later throughout the scriptures that that's what it represented. So here is Elijah. The fire didn't cause him to wrap his face in the anointing. No, he wanted to see that. Yeah. The earthquake didn't cause him to want to wrap his face in the, the mantle. He wanted to see that. He wanted mm -hmm. to see the results of it. The wind blowing and all of that, that didn't cause him to wrap his face. In the man. That still small voice. That still small voice of God. It says Elijah took his man and he wrapped his face in the man. So he wrapped his face in the man. And he went out and stood in the inner of the cave. 
And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Now that question was asked to him just a couple verses before, wasn't it? Yeah. He couldn't answer. He began to make an excuse. What doest thou here, Elijah? And he had the same answer. He said, I've been very jealous of Lord, the Lord God of hope because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with thy sword. And even I only am left and seek thy life to take it away. The Lord didn't speak to him before. The Lord didn't minister to him before. He told him to go to the mountain. As he went to the mountain, we read that the wind blew, that the earthquake, that the fire fell. And after the fire, a still small voice, uh, and he called Elijah to wrap his face uh, in the mantle. He caused him to wrap his face in that mantle, wrapped in the anointing. Uh, and when the voice of God speaks to us, Brother Joe, it's going to cause us to do the same thing. Uh, and say, Lord, I realize uh, and recognize that I need to be wrapped up uh, in the anointing. I need the anointing. It's the anointing that makes a difference. Uh, it's the anointing that's going to bring you the answer. There's some folks here looking for answers this morning. You've got a lot of questions. You've been in the wilderness. You've been hiding out in the cave. And it just seems like there's no way out for you. I'm the only one or whatever. It may be that you're going through this morning. But when that still small voice of God speaks to your heart, you're going to recognize your need for the anointing today. And as you put his face in that mantle and he begin to wrap his face, why did he do that? Why did he do that? So he wrapped his face in that mantle. See, with my face wrapped in this mantle, not only can you not hear me, but with my face wrapped in that mantle, I can't see anything. That's right. With my face wrapped in that mantle, I have a hard time hearing what Jezebel has to say to me. When we get ourselves all wrapped up, I'll just wear it like this. When we get ourselves all wrapped up in the mantle, we get ourselves all wrapped up in the anointing. See, there's something about being in the presence of the Lord. He right. said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, uh, right. saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, and when we get into the anointing, uh, it don't matter what Jezebel said to us. Uh, when we get wrapped up in right. the anointing, it doesn't matter what the devil said to us. Uh, when we get wrapped up in the anointing, uh, it don't matter what the critics say. Uh, when we get wrapped up in the anointing, uh, it don't matter if we feel like we're the only one. Uh, we'll say, I'll be the only one. Uh, I'll preach it. I'll proclaim it. When we get wrapped up in the anointing, we'll begin to hear from God. Elijah there wrapped his face in the anointing. I heard the still small voice of God that calls him to wrap his face up in that mantle. It represented that anointing. Church, when we hear the voice of God speak to our heart, we'll feel that anointing of the Holy Ghost of God begin to wrap us up and begin to wrap us up. We're going to get divine revelation from God and God's going to begin to speak to us. Yeah. Just as he did Elijah. Amen. He said to Elijah, the Lord said unto him, Go, return to thy way, to thy way of the wilderness of Damascus. First thing he told him to do is get out of here. Yeah. Get out of the wilderness. Get out of the cave. I haven't called you to the wilderness. I haven't called you to the cave. And I have not called you to run from the devil. Yeah, that's right. This morning, God wants you to know that today. He has not called you to run scared from the devil. Come on. That's right. God has not called you to run scared uh, because the devil said, I'm going to take you out if you keep living that way. God's called you. He said, first thing I want you to do, I want you to get out of this wilderness uh, and get back in the place that I've called you to be. Who the God said to somebody this morning, uh, I haven't called you to a wilderness, I haven't called you to a cave. Uh, get back in your post in God's house. Uh, get back in that Sunday school class. Uh, get back into that pulpit. Uh, get back into that ministry. Uh, get back out there handing out pamphlets. Uh, get back there doing whatever I called you to do. Get out of this place. What are you doing here anyway? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. When we get wrapped up in the anointing, we'll begin to hear what God's saying to us. He said, first thing I want you to do is get out of this wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king of Syria. And Jehu, the son of Jimdi, shall anoint to be king. Elijah, the son of Saphat, of Abel, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped from the sword of Hazael, Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Yet have I left me, listen, yet have I left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. 
He said, Elijah, see, God began to speak to Elijah here. Uh, he told this man of God, first thing I want you to do is get out of this wilderness. Uh, and when you get out of this wilderness, uh, I want you to go back and I want you to anoint these three men. Uh, why did he tell me one of the anoint these three men? Because these three men uh, were going to do mighty men things of God. Now, he saw him there. Uh, this let Elijah know immediately, I'm not the only one. There's at least three more uh, because God wants me to anoint them. Matter of fact, he told him, uh, you're going to anoint Lord Elijah to be your successor. Tomorrow. Yeah. You're going to Lord Elijah to take your place. Yes. See, some people are scared to get wrapped up in the anointing because they're scared of what God's going to speak to them. They're scared to impart into somebody else. They're scared to pour out uh, into somebody else uh, because they're scared that, that somebody's going to take their place. They're scared that somebody's going to step up uh, and take their place. They're scared to death uh, that they're going to preach better than they preach. Uh, they're scared to death that they're going to get a bigger church than they got. Uh, they're scared to death that their evangelistic ministry uh, is going to be bigger than theirs ever was. Uh, oh, I pray to God that those that I anoint uh, and pray for, that I pour myself into, uh, oh, I hope they turn their world upside down. Uh, oh, I hope that they turn their world uh, upside down. Uh, when we begin to anoint and pour uh, into people and Park into them. Uh, oh, Brother Mitch Stone over there in Graceville, Florida. Uh, I hope that church busts at the seams uh, and they're running 500 full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that would be all right to me. Uh, he was under my ministry uh, at one time. That's fine with me. But Elijah found out real quick he was not the only one. That's right. He said, anoint these men. Yeah. He said, oh, by the way, there's 7,000 more yes. who have not bowed a knee. Thank you, Jesus. Who have not bowed a knee. And have not kissed the hand of Baal. They have not given in to that seducing spirit of Baal. You're not the only one. That's right. I know there's times we feel like we're the only one. I've been there. You've been there. And God said, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. I got somebody, some somebodies, that I want you to take this anointing back yeah. to. You've been wrapped up in the anointing. See, God doesn't wrap us up in the anointing for us to get a feel good feeling. Say, man, that sure feel good. Wow, God don't give us services like He gave us last Sunday. And God don't give us the anointing of the Holy Ghost for us. And man, that was good. I felt goosebumps on top of my goosebumps. God don't give us that anointing for you to say, uh, Oh, Brother Jamie, you just flat preached this morning. That was great. That was wonderful. That was awesome. Uh, that's why not why God gave us the anointing. Uh, God didn't give us the anointing that we can argue Scripture with somebody uh, and, and begin to let them see how theologically smart we are uh, and what has been revealed to me. Uh, and we can say, Well, this Scripture is actually saying this and begin to break it down. Uh, who cares? Uh, people want to know what thus saith the Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter if we are it. Uh, I can stand stand here and quote Genesis the Revelations to you this morning, uh, but without the anointing, uh, it would be to go up there. But when we get wrapped up in the anointing, uh, we're going to leave here with a purpose. Uh, Elijah was a man who lost his purpose. Uh, Elijah was a man who had forgotten his calling uh, because he was running for his own life. Uh, he said, Jezebel's going to kill me. Uh, you can focus on yourself if you want to, but I think this is why Jesus told his disciples. I think, I really do, that he was thinking about Elijah. He was thinking about Samson. He was thinking about all these men that had fallen short before. When he said, if any man is going to be my disciple, let him deny himself. Yeah. Take up his cross daily. And follow me. Right. We sing that song. Forget about yourself. And concentrate on him. And worship him. Yeah. Worship him. One man said it this way. He said, pray for your enemies. You're the one that made them. Yeah. <laughs> We're so worried about our enemies. <laughs> We're so worried about what they're going to do to us. You know why they're, are they our enemies? I can't think of anybody that's my enemy today because they dislike me. Because they dislike me. And I try my best to be a nice person. I, I found people that got along when I was in the world. I got along with everybody. I could hang out with the jocks. I could hang out with the, the blacks. I could hang out with any of them. It didn't matter. I got along with everybody. Yeah. Everything was great. Everything was fine. I could get along with anybody. Because I didn't want them to beat me up, so I treated them real nice. <laughs> I could get along with all of them. I just had that personality, and I could get along with any person. But when the Spirit of God begins to rise up in anointing, we begin to preach the Word of God. Elijah got the tension of Jezebel. 
And she began, he began to come against that kingdom. When we begin to come against that kingdom of hell, when we begin to come to forces, against the forces of hell, the devil's going to begin to rise up in people. People's true color is going to begin to shine forth. That devil that's in them is going to begin to rise. That Jezebel spirit's going to begin to rise. They're going to come and they're going to do their very best to put us in a wilderness somewhere, in a backslid condition, questioning our existence, questioning our calling, questioning what we're supposed to be. We can either run scared or we can get wrapped up in the moment. Say, I'm not running. I'm not running. I've got my foot on the rock. My mind made up. Thank you, Jesus. He said that those that have a calling upon their life, that they need to make their call and their election sure. I know who's calling. I know whose message I'm delivering. I know what I'm supposed to be proclaiming. But in points of weakness, as Elijah was in, I'm not judging Elijah. We all get there. I've been there. I've been in that place. I've come home and I told Sister Amy, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not preaching anymore. What do you mean you're not preaching anymore? I'm not doing it. People don't listen anyway. I'm not, not going to do it. I'm not going to serve God. But did God call you into full-time ministry? Yeah, but I'm going to give me a job. I'm going to go make something to myself. I'm going to go and be somebody. See, that's the problem with a lot of folks today. They want to be somebody. Yeah. Yeah. There's no greater somebody than somebody that's filled with the anointing. Right. That's right. I'm so glad, Sister May, that God shook me there in that prayer closet that day. And I said, Lord, you give me one more chance. I'll not mess it up this time. God's offered somebody a chance this morning. Yeah. God's given you another opportunity this morning. He's right there in your cave. He's right there at the door. Where you thought that you were running, where you thought God couldn't get to you, thought nobody could get to you. Brother Buster said this morning, don't matter if you're on the front pew, the back pew, the front porch, or, or wherever you are, God wants to get to you. God wants to speak to you. He's going to speak to you. It don't matter if you got a Budweiser in one hand or Marlboro or Campbell, or whatever they smoke today, in the other hand, sitting on your easy chair watching football. If God wants to speak to you, uh, He will speak to you. Uh, if God's got something to say to you, uh, He will say to you. Uh, it does not matter if you've got a bunch of junk in your ear set, uh, trying to uh, drown out everything that uh, people's preaching and saying to you, I'm not listening to you. Uh, God's going to speak because it's that's that right. still, small voice of God that's yeah. speaking. It's going to cause you to wrap your face yes. in your mouth yes. and say, speak, Lord. Yes. You're the only one I want to use. See, yes. Elijah did that. Yes. He wrapped his face in the anointing because he said, I don't want any distractions. I don't want anything. This is what this mantle represents. The Spirit of God, this mantle represents the anointing. I don't want to hear anything else uh, but what the said. Well, see, a lot of people give us opinions. That's Job. Uh, they'll tell you why you got there uh, and what happened to get you there and all these things. Uh, well, I just said, I don't want any outside influence. Uh, I want to know what the Lord said. I'm going to get wrapped up in the anointing. Uh, you're looking for answers this morning. Say, Brother Jamie, you haven't given my answer yet. Uh, you're looking for your answer this morning. Uh, said, I've asked everybody and they haven't given my answer yet. Get wrapped up in the anointing. This morning, hear that voice of God speaking, uh, and what God's going to tell you is what I'm fixing to tell you right now. Get out of this place. Come on. Get out of this cave. Get out of this wilderness. Because I didn't call you here. That's right. You're not doing what I called you to do. Come on. And you know who you are this morning. Come on. God said you're not doing what I called you to do. So quit doing what you're doing and start doing what I called you to do. Come on. Quit running. Quit hiding in the cave. Quit staying in this wilderness experience. Get wrapped up in the mantle and the anointing this morning. Thank you. And you're going to hear from God. Come out of that cave this morning. Get wrapped up in the mantle and the anointing. And you're going to hear from God. He's going to tell you, go and anoint others. He's going to tell you, uh, go and see, join yourself if you want to. If there's 7,000 of them, He's going to call you into a place of victory. Uh, and He's going to call you to anoint someone else. Uh, that when you are gone, Brother Wayne, come here for a second. Uh, that when you are gone, uh, He said, Elijah, you go and anoint Elijah. Because when you're gone, He's going to be your successor. Uh, when you're gone, He's going to... And we read it. Uh, what, what happened? Here comes Elijah. He's walking through there. That mantle just brushes Elijah. There's Elijah. He's over He said, let me go back and kiss mom and dad. Let me go back uh, and take care of those things. Elijah said, I didn't get anything to you, son. What you want to do? Read it. There in the last part of chapter 19. Oh, but no, Elijah had felt that mantle. Uh, that mantle, that anointing. Uh, they, they brushed him by. That, that anointing that Elijah, just a few verses before, uh, 
Uh, he was right then. He brushed up against him. Uh, he was anointed. Uh, he said, I'm going to sell everything. Uh, I'm going to go boil my ox and burn my, my yoke. I'm going to get rid of every bit of it uh, because I feel a calling. Uh, oh, if somebody's soul uh, would get wrapped right up in the anointing this morning, uh, we think I'm the only one. We think it's all about us. Uh, we think it's just our business. We think it's just our lives. Uh, somebody is waiting on you this morning. Uh, we come down with that anointing. Uh,